Hello everyone, this is Empress Pamela. Welcome to this edition of Cancer Chronicles Day 35. So, today is actually January 31st, 2022. So, 31 plus 4 days in December 2021. December 27th is when I received my cancer diagnosis. So it's been 35 days since I received my endometrial cancer diagnosis. Five days prior to that, so if we say day 40, it's been 40 days since my first surgery. So in the last 40 days, I've had two surgeries. The first surgery on December 22nd was a hysteroscopy, um, wherein they went into my uterus, did a DNC, and also did a biopsy of the mass that they had found back in November through an ultrasound. So I've been going on this journey of tests and exams since November 1st. And it's just about February 1st, 2022. So it's been about three months. But again, in the last 40 days, I've had two surgeries. So it's been 35 days since my cancer diagnosis. On January 10th, I had my complete robotic-assisted laparoscopic hysterectomy, wherein they took out my uterus and all organs um, associated with that, fallopian tubes, ovaries, cervix, the tumor, right? And... I, last week on the 26th, so about, what's that, 16 days after surgery, I went and did a follow-up visit just to check on my incisions. So when you have laparoscopic surgery, they do a bunch of incisions in your abdomen. So I had three on the left side including my belly button, and then one large one on the right, and then a smaller one. So quite a few little um, love bites on my abdomen. And it is very painful recovery. The first, I'd say, week, for a week, I was only able to sleep on my back. And normally I'm a belly sleeper, so that hasn't been happening. Um, I think day 10, I started maybe sleeping half the night on one of my sides. But um, as you can imagine, there's a whole, I forgot how many days I was on pain pills and then alternating between ibuprofen and Tylenol, trying to get to the point where I can go to the bathroom unassisted, to get to the point where I was able to walk down the stairs in my house. So for... I'd say the first easily 10 days I was primarily up in my bed um, having to walk every I think like four times a day maybe if I could and then um, prior to surgery one of the nurses had recommended that I do pedal pushes in the bed to avoid or lessen the probability of getting um, blood clots in the legs so something I noticed in addition to my skin getting very dry, like losing moisture very quickly. So if you ever go through this, you get a lot of moisturizer for your skin. Do pedal pushes in bed after surgery. Try to move even if you're in tons of pain. Make sure you're taking the appropriate appropriate amount of pain um, pills for pain management because if you don't, you, you don't want to be in that position. You don't want to overtake it either. So you have to really be conscientious about your pain management. Um, 
Okay, and what was the other thing? Oh, movement in general. Your body, you'll notice if you are sitting in bed for a couple, even after a couple days, I noticed muscle atrophy. So it is very important to keep your muscles active the best way you can within reason so you're not overdoing it you're not in pain but you're also maybe you incorporate some sort of body skin massage from a loved one or something like that someone to help you with the moisturizer and the um, keeping your muscles supple movements so that's kind of my pro tips on post-surgery but it is very um it gets frustrating because you don't want to rely on other people, especially if you're a person who is like me, kind of a control freak and always doing for others. Um, it gets it, It'll wear you down emotionally because you just don't want to be a burden. That's me. That's what my situation was. Um, what else? I'm so appreciative of my family and my husband especially because... Even while we're having, or we've had marital strain the last, definitely the last year, but um, it really tested how much he's willing to do and for me. And um, I'm just so appreciative. We'll be married like 30 years this um February 29th, we'll be, have our 30, 30th anniversary, so it's, we've been together a long freaking time. We've been together longer than that, 32 years, I met him. February 6th was our first date in 1990. Anyway, so you realize what's important to you, who's important to you, who's got your back, who's willing to help you out. And um, that's cancer for you. It'll put things in perspective. But um, I had a good visit. So let's get back to the most recent shenanigans. I went to the doctor. My, my wounds are healing. I still have to go back at the end of this of uh, February. February 23rd, they're going to check my internal incisions, internal stitches, internal whatever. Because they have to attach the the empty space of the cervix to the vagina, and so they do sutures or stitches in there that are supposed to dissolve. But they're going to wait another couple weeks to check that. So that'll be one more thing, and then after that, because my so my pathology report was shared with me on the twenty sixth, and the pathology came back as stage 1A so that's the best news right because um, there's no radiation or chemo recommended so they think they got it all basically so I go for my visit on the 23rd to check the internal situation and then for six every six months in the future every six months for the next couple of years I'll go and get a pelvic exam just to check to make sure there's no whatever recurrence or anything like that. So that is the protocol for endometrial cancer stage 1A, which I'm so grateful and blessed, believe it or not, that it came back that way. Um, and Going forward, so, you know, when you're facing a uh, cancer diagnosis, you are kind of propelled into looking at your life and what are you doing, what were your dreams and goals as a child, have you fulfilled your purpose, have you done everything you wanted to do in this life? I mean, yeah, you're facing your mortality, right? So, um... I'm going to uh, accelerate my um, concentration on finding my purpose, living my mission, 
living each day to the fullest once I'm fully healed, but always with the um, focus on health, number one, uh, listening to my body, whether it's my body needs certain movement, so movement and my body needs certain nutrition, um, always listening to that, having a more cognizant approach of what I need, mind, body, spirit. How do I listen? Well, it's going to be through meditation, through walks in nature, um, quiet time, and also paying attention to messages that I get through synchronicities um, while I'm doing my artwork. So I was going to show you. I do something. I create this uh, sacred geometry um, outline, and then I color. Yeah, I color it in. I use. I choose the colors that I'm going to use, and I use all different kinds of markers and such. But this is kind of a nice one because my husband even said it looks like an eye. So keeping focus on what's important to me. I used a lot of green. Well, my two favorite colors when I was little was green and purple. So I wanted to do something that captured those. But when I look at colors now, I'm always drawn to the chakras and what they represent. So green is the heart chakra, but also it's also meaning health. So health is important. Purple, I see as the third eye or even the crown. Uh, so using your intuition, being intuitive, being connected to source. So the heart chakra, the third eye, the sixth chakra, and the crown chakra. And then yellow, this is kind of different versions of yellow, is the solar plexus. And that for me is um, confidence, worthiness, willpower. So my focus is going to be on my health, listening to my intuition, but also standing in my own power, like being confident that the messages I'm getting from my heart, from my intuition about my health are the ones that I need to hear. So if that makes sense, um, it may not make sense to you, but I just want to give you an update. That's what's going on with my cancer journey. Um, for the month of February, I'm focusing on, again, manifesting, healing, um, and also stepping into my purpose, my mission. What do I need to be doing? What is my heart telling me? What have been my desires my entire life that I put to, us, to the side for whatever reason? And um, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Also, I'm focusing on manifesting. So I'm going to try to have a video every day manifesting a winning lottery ticket, kind of lighten up the mood a little bit. Um, and you can kind of... Uh, join me and see if I can manifest some money so that I could pay some of these doctor bills, which is out of control. Crazy. Um, but I'm so grateful to the medical team that have basically saved my life. And on that note, have a beautiful day. Listen to your body, mind, soul, and Take every day as if it's a new lease on life. I love you and thank you for listening.